Whew, feels good in here. So you want to start a garden, but you aren't sure if you have enough sunlight. Well, I got you covered. Let's go. So when it comes to having a successful garden, a lot of people will say you need a certain amount of sunlight in order to grow a certain crop. And a lot of people think that because they might have a shady backyard or maybe they live in an apartment that you know, is blocked by the building for most of the day that they can't have a garden. And they rule out a lot of crops that you otherwise could grow and actually make a huge impact, not only on the amount of food you're growing, but just the amount of money you can save with having a garden. And so in today's episode, we're gonna cover quite a few crops that you can be growing. And this is by no means, uh, this is barely scratching the surface. This is by no means a comprehensive list. And so um, we're gonna cover some of these, but the first thing I wanna kinda cover is the idea of the old saying of roots, shoots, and leaves, or flowers and fruits. And so if you are growing something for roots, shoots, and leaves, those are crops that typically only need between th about three to five hours of sun. Some obviously will do better with more sun, but they can survive and be just fine with three to five hours of sun. Then if you're growing fruits and uh, basically fruits and flowers, those ones need about five to seven hours. And again, if you can give them more, they'll be happy. They're not gonna be complaining, but um, kind of five hours is that minimum threshold. And so uh, with that being said, I know a lot of people also, they always ask the question of, well, when it comes to three to five hours of sunlight, what, what quality is the sunlight, right? Can it be filtered? Can it be intermittent? Like if there's sun for 30 minutes, shade for an hour and a half, sun for another 30 minutes, does that matter? And the answer is no, it really doesn't matter. If you get three to five hours of sunlight, doesn't matter how they get it, as long as it is direct. And that means that there is nothing blocking the path of the sun uh, to your crop that you'll be fine. And so right now, I, I can not that you should stare into the sun, but I can see the sun right now. Now, uh, that is what's considered direct sun. That means the sun's rays are gonna be coming in direct contact with your plant leaves. And then you get into what's called filtered light. And filtered light is where there's sunlight, but there's something kind of blocking some of it, right? It might be a tree that has some leaves you know, that have filled out. And you can see the sun, but the sun is kind of semi-blocking it. That's filtered light, right? You need three to five hours of direct sun in order to grow these crops. And so that being said, let's get started. All right, so the first kind of category of crops that you can be growing is kind of a, a, a generic category and that's herbs. But not all herbs are gonna fall into this category. And so I was kind of specific with the ones that I chose. Now, these will need again between three to five hours of sunlight. If you can give them more, they're gonna appreciate it, but um, they're gonna do just fine. And so regardless if you're growing in a, a window or a patio garden, or if you have kind of a shaded backyard, a lot of these should be just fine for you. So the first one is chives. Um, chives do really great and you don't need that much sunlight. We've grown them in a little container on our patio and I'd say our patio maybe gets about four hours of sun. And so um, again, that one kind of is the shoots category, right? Remember, roots, shoots, and leaves. And so parsley, you're harvesting for its leaves, but it's an herb. They do really well in low light. Um, I've planted many of these underneath other crops, you know, in a kind of an intercropping polyculture type gardening method, and they do really, really well. Next one is sage, again, leaves. These ones do surprisingly well in low light. Um, about eight, nine years ago, we actually had a back, I don't know, four or five gardens ago at my parents' house, we planted out sage underneath a bunch of mature cedar trees. And it was the only place where we could grow them. And uh, we basically had what we called a forest herb garden and it did really well, but it was one of the only things that really excelled. And so you know, the basil did not do that well. Basil needs a little bit more light. You know, it needs more like five to seven hours of sun. Despite, your, you know, despite the fact that you're harvesting for its leaves, it's really pushing it to have less than five. Whereas, you know, the, the sage did really, really well. And so sage is one that does awesome. Next one is kind of that same, same kind of theme, the Mediterranean theme is thyme. Thyme does exceedingly well in low light. And we've grown many, uh, many windowsill herb gardens. When we were, when Cindy and I were living in an apartment, I just was, I was, I had a thirst to grow something. I just really wanted to grow something. And we didn't have, much more than maybe four hours of sunlight. And so we threw some thyme seeds in a pot and we grew thyme and we, you know, we grew the crap out of that. So thyme is an awesome one. It does very, very well in low light conditions. Now one that actually exceeds 
in low light, um, it, or it excels. Uh, it, it will exceed your expectations and it will excel in the garden in low light, and that's stinging nettles. Stinging nettles does so well in low light conditions, and that's because stinging nettles uh, can grow in, in the open, you know, kind of open air, does perfectly fine in perfect, you know, in uh, direct sunlight, but it also does well in kind of fringe forest environments as well. Now the next one you can grow, which does really well, and I've actually kind of found this to be somewhat, it grows too well in shady environments, and that's spearmint. So any type of mint does really, really well. Uh, we grew these in, uh, in an herb garden by our house, and it was completely blocked by the side of our house. But this thing just, I mean, they took off, and they absolutely did really well. So three to five hours of sunlight, do not underestimate mint whatsoever. Really fun to grow, definitely does really well, and it's kind of a low maintenance crop. And then the last one that's kind of considered an herb for all you cat lovers is catnip. And catnip does very, very well. It's actually in the mint family, so uh, it does well for those reasons. But it will do well, again, in just open sky environments, direct sun, but it also does really well in kind of just fringe forest environments as well, where it grows natively. And so catnip is one that you can definitely grow with low light and have no problem at all, three to five hours of sun growing catnip. All right, so the next category is your leaf crops. Now, uh, some of the herbs were also leaves, I understand that, but these are kind of true leafy vegetables. And so these are ones, again, that you're harvesting for the leaves, the roots, or the shoots. And these are the leaf category, which are things like mustard. Mustard does very well. Now, I wouldn't say three hours is enough. I would probably give it between four and five hours, but if you have any open sky whatsoever, you're probably gonna have around four hours of sunlight. And so mustard is one that will do really, really well. Uh, the next one is kale. Now, you might not think that kale is one that, uh, that does really well in low light because obviously we grow it in, sun, uh, in sunlight, direct sunlight, for seven to nine hours, sometimes even more, and it does great. Again, just because it will do great in seven to nine hours doesn't mean it won't survive and somewhat even thrive in like four to five hours. So there's a really important distinction to make there and, that, and that's that just because you can grow it there doesn't mean you can't grow it with less, right? And I want you guys to kind of focus in on that. Will it do as well? Maybe not, but is it worth not growing? <laughs> you definitely want to have a garden. Having some garden is better than not having a garden at all. And so uh, yeah, kale is another one, does really, really well. Next one is uh, kind of your more unique stuff, like your your shiso, right? Your your perilla, um, you know, that is kind of like a, an Asian green. It's an Asian herb, but um, people really like to grow it. It's super delicious, and it does very very well. It's kind of in the basil family, but it requires slightly less light, I find, than basil. Then you have another one like Honsai Thai here, another kind of like a mustard green. It's also in kind of just the, the leaf category. It's almost like a cross between pak choy, cabbage, and mustard greens. It's really delicious. I absolutely love sauteing it down. It's a phenomenal one, but it's just a unique one that I decided to throw in here because we find you could grow it in like three to five hours of sunlight, no problem at all. Now the next one that actually really needs low light, you cannot put this one in bright light. You cannot put this one in like seven to nine hours. It'll actually burn, and that is what's called Claytonia or miner's lettuce. Now, miners uh, that were coming, you know, they were uh, coming into California, they were coming into Washington trying to find gold, they would suffer from what's called scurvy. And a lot of the gold mining was done in mountains. And during, you know, during that time, uh, scurvy was fatal and a lot of people were suffering from a vitamin C deficiency. And so miners would uh, kind of forage for things that they could eat and they stumbled across this absolutely delicious green that grew on the side of mountains and it was basically in heavily forested areas, lots of rainfall, lots of cloud cover, it kind of just Pacific Northwest style environments. And they found that this green was incredibly high in vitamin C and would prevent scurvy. And that's where it got its name, miner's lettuce. And it's very, very delicious. It will regularly self seed in your garden if you just let it kind of go to seed. Um, and it's beautiful, it's really, really delicious, really incredible in the garden, but you cannot put that in like seven plus hours of sunlight. It'll burn, it'll scorch. So that is one that will thrive in like three to five hours of sunlight. And then the other two here are just, again, standard leaf crops here. You got some little gem butterhead lettuce and some orange Swiss chard. 
Can they take more than five hours? Absolutely, just like kale, they totally can. But if you've got three to five hours and that's all you have, definitely try growing them because these fall into the leaf category and they should, in theory, do pretty well for you. All right, so now we have the shoots category. Now, this is one of two crops that you could really grow with low light. Uh, the other one, which I am so bummed I didn't grab the seeds for, but uh, is actually asparagus. So asparagus you harvest for these shoots. And then there is celery, which believe it or not, you harvest for these shoots. Now, uh, the celery stalks is kind of what you consider a shoot, right? And so the shoots um, are just new growth and they don't need a whole lot of sunlight to start growing. Will they tolerate more light? Absolutely. I've grown celery in seven to nine hours of sun, no problem at all. But will they grow with three to five hours of sun? Absolutely. So celery is a great one and you don't have to get them that tall. You can start cutting them from the moment they grow. Um, a lot of people grow what's called cutting celery and that's where you just take celery, you densely sow it and you just harvest it for the leaves. You just basically clip it off as soon as it starts growing and you just keep cutting it back and it'll keep regrowing and you just trim it off almost like cut and come again style lettuce. And um, so celery is a great one, but also like I said, super big missed opportunity, but asparagus. We sell asparagus seed, but we also sell in the springtime, we sell asparagus dormant crowns. Get some asparagus in your garden. It will thrive in low light. Um, we regularly will hunt it along ditches and uh, kind of along kind of uh, the, the fringe zones between a forest and a field does exceedingly well in kind of that fringe to low light type environment. So asparagus is another one that does really well. And then the final category is the roots category. So the roots, now the roots are what you'd expect. Things like beets. You don't have to get the largest beets in the world in order to grow them. You can harvest them for the leaves as the leaves, or you can harvest them for the roots as the beet. We've grown them numerous times in low light situations. Do they get the largest beets ever? No, but they still get you something that you can harvest and consume, and they're really fun to grow, so give beets a try. The other one is carrots. Now, carrots are again a root, and you're not necessarily gonna have the largest carrots ever with you know, three to five hours of sun, but I'd say with like five hours or so, they're gonna do fairly well. I wouldn't give them much less than about four hours. Three hours, you're really not gonna end up with a whole ton. But four hours, you probably should end up with something that's at least a salvageable carrot. And five hours, I think you could probably get a full-sized carrot to harvest. So carrots are another one that can do really well in kind of that low light situation. And then the last one is radishes. And I've grown radishes, believe it or not, in three to four hours of sunlight, no problem at all. I grew them in a windowsill just as a test when I was going to college. I was super bored. I threw some, some radish seeds in a solo cup and, um, and then uh, I just threw them in my windowsill. And believe it or not, with very minimal college dorm room light, I was able to grow radishes. And it was just a fun project, but it proved that radishes don't need that much sunlight. And I've always been able to give them five to seven hours but it proves that with less than five, they'll do just fine. And so radishes are another great one that you can grow. And so those are all of the crops that I chose for you. But just remember, if it's the roots, if it's the shoots or the leaves, there is a very, very good chance that five hours or less of sunlight will be totally fine to grow these crops. And so if you have a low light environment, do not discount the ability to grow a garden. Do not necessarily rule out a certain crop. Try it. Give it a shot. The worst that's gonna happen is you're gonna end up spending time and you're gonna learn something that you might not already know, which is, well, it didn't grow and I might need a little more sunlight to grow it, right? Those things can be discovery moments. Don't necessarily feel discouraged if you can't grow something. Just learn from it and find out what you can grow. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. If you did, make sure to throw a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll catch you all on the next episode. All right, take care guys, grow bigger, bye.